In this video, I want to discuss uh, mobile architectures and iOS apps. So mobile apps kind of break down using the standard MVC framework, um, which I'll explain in a second. And then you have this additional component of like a networking layer, uh, as well as integrating with the actual device. So the things that allow you to access the hardware that, you know, people would normally think about when they think about cameras. Uh, so phones like cameras or location, uh, Bluetooth and so on. So if you don't, if you've never done GUI development before, if you've like a, you're a backend engineer, um, there is just some way of dividing up, uh, the logic of the application into models, views, and controllers. Um, so for example, if we're looking at this Twitter application, then we want to look at the model tier. Uh, so at the model tier, what that means is, uh, I'm going to have like, let's say a user class, a tweet class, um, uh, perhaps something to kind of like store my followers, my following, my settings. Um, and so a model has first like the notion of like, well, what are the properties associated with that model? So for example, in the user here, they have a username, a profile picture, uh, URL, uh, maybe the, the number of followers, the number of following, uh, let's say for the tweet, they maybe have the text, uh, the number of favorites, um, and they have the relationships. So for example, a tweet will have a user, uh, which is the author of whatever tweeted it. So the schema is just a list of types. That's just the, the properties. Um, so models, you know, especially when you think about typical applications, you, you gosh, like, oh, well, that's where the business logic of the application belongs. But in most mobile apps, at least these RESTful clients, which are what we focus on, um, the model tier is actually really thin because uh, all of that heavy logic belongs on the server. So all I do is I, I, I just listen to what the API tells me. Um, so for example, if I load most view controllers, most screens in an iPhone application will do a network call to fetch the data associated with that screen. So there's commonly like a list view. And then like, if I click on a tweet, I can see the detail view of that tweet. Um, so when I think about that, I, there is no logic on the device related to the model, generally speaking. So all that fancy logic resides on the server. And all I have to do is like represent it. Um, there is some, a, some set of like, uh, uh, um, I guess code that belongs in model that's commonly found in model. So, uh, because the, um, the model comes in probably via JSON or XML, uh, from an API, there has to be some way to deserialize that into the actual, uh, properties. The model tier often is associated with the persistence. Um, and then, so, uh, finally the. Like if you look here, the, the tw Twitter client has like 14 hours, four hours, two hours. Well, that's not how, you know, the model objects store time, right? Like there's going to be some date time format. And so I want some way of, uh, having some kind of friendly human readable, uh, display. And so a model will often have that type of, um, like data presentation there. So similarly, like maybe it's not stored as full name as it's shown here. Maybe it's like for, maybe the API returns it as first name, last name, and it's up to you to assemble it as a full name. So again, that's about like data formatting. So first, these are the four parts of a model. Um, and second, there is not commonly other roles found in models. If I look at a model uh, of an arbitrary pro uh, project or arbitrary application, I would probably see these four tasks and maybe maybe that would be it. Um, so models on RESTful clients especially tend to be very, very thin um, and, and pretty, uh, pretty simple. So models, good news, you know, is the easy part of iOS development. So when you look at view, the view layer, so views is talking about um, how you're representing the data. So you need to have a collection of view objects and some way to lay them out, right? So like CSS, for example, has like, like a flow-based layout strategy. Um, and iOS is a little bit different. Um, uh, so in iOS, you have a collection of uh, like view types, like images and labels and buttons and text views. Uh, and the way that it's laid out, it's, they're actually just absolutely positioned, which is this huge sin in HTML. I would never, I would never absolutely position, um, things in HTML, but that's how it works in iOS. Uh, and then there's this other kind of, uh, technology called auto layout, which is how 
the uh, the views should respond when like the label changes its the number of characters or I rotate the phone and so but the first step is that it's just hierarchically placed uh, in an absolute way with these rules that define how it should move um, so the cool thing about views is that well if you look at this if you look at this thing uh, this this image of Twitter uh, right now we see images buttons labels and the scrollable thing um, and in fact if i were to continue to look through dozens and dozens of applications i would find that it's pretty much this really small subset of views that build most app that compose most applications um, and there's also the the form side right so this is the display then you have a small set of controls related to user input so switches um, a slider um, the like text input but again, it's a very, very small number of controls you have to learn. So that's the that's the good news with views. The good news with views is there's really a like a very small set of controls. B the uh, the layout strategy is very simple because it's unlike CSS, it's just absolutely positioned. Um, auto layout is somewhat complex and it is uh, takes a little bit to learn. But um, once you do know it, then it's it's a pretty uh, convenient way of expressing like where things should go and where they should change. Uh, similarly, the animation framework um, is also very easy to use. It's just things moving, um, you know, uh, tweeting from one value to another. And then the last thing that views are responsible is f for is for the event detection. So for example, if I wanna swipe or pinch or pan, then all of this is handled at the view tier. Um, so conceptually, views are pretty straightforward but i will say that for ios like um, i would spend most of my time at this tier so it's quite a lot of work to um, make a pixel perfect representation of a mock uh, and especially if it has like some really cool thing like let's say that i want to pinch out on that photo and have it expand into a large photo view of, of this guy's uh, profile icon like you might have things like this which take uh, a lot of time because like for example like there's a common behavior that you might see where you see this navigation bar the home right as i'm scrolling up you might see that navigation bar start to shrink um, into some like really thin bar so the thing is like thing behaviors like that are not natively supported by the framework so if you've worked with any framework you know that once you go if you're working within the framework right then everything is just really easy everything's just hunky-dory but like if you want to deviate from the behavior that the framework gives you for free then it's not like a little bit harder it can become like 10 or 100 times harder and that's what that's what makes views so challenging because it's quite easy to use them but your designer is likely going to give you uh, have you do something which the framework doesn't give you for free and so once that happens like that can be like oh my gosh something that took me a moment to implement using a standard control all of a sudden you know is a hundred times harder because i have to do something completely custom now so views is definitely that and that's why it's so important to kind of try to um uh, hit a certain visual polish because if you just go for basic polish then that's definitely in the easy zone because you're just going to be able to use the stock views and the stock behaviors but if you try to implement some of the polish that you see out there in the wild then you realize oh gosh well how do i you know how do i do some of these how do i do these some of these things like something silly in ios you would think would be easy is like this mixed font styling or even clickable links right you might say hey for this basic app i'm just going to let it go but actually, like making these links clickable is non-trivial, um, and having like mixed fonts and, and playing with NS attributed strings uh, are also is also like a non-trivial exercise. So from from here on out, it's it's good news. Um, controllers, which is the um, the thing that the the kind of object that's associated with this screen that wires everything together, also has a very similar to models, only has a few roles. And um, they're always the same, right? Like when this screen kind of wakes up and, and does something, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to make your network request. Um, then the view is going to fire the event, right? Like so the view is going to tell me that someone tapped that favorite. But the controller class, the view controller class, is the thing that's actually going to um, then implement the, the button tap and do something about it. And so 
really as a result of event handling, it's not like, oh gosh, well gosh, what, what type of crazy logic might it do? It's for a RESTful client, it's probably gonna do one of two things. It's either gonna A, make a network call. So for example, if I hit the star, if I hit the retweet, that's gonna, that's gonna um, make a network call there. Or it's gonna evoke some kind of navigation. So for example, if I hit the reply button, it's gonna bring the compose screen up. If I hit the new, it's gonna also gonna bring the compose up. If I uh, tap in the cell there or a row, um, it's gonna go and uh, give me the full screen tweet view. Um, uh, and so that is kind of, again, uh, in iOS, a controller is by design supposed to be very thin. You're gonna find in your applications, especially the first few weeks, that your controllers are actually gonna have a heft amount of code in it, right? That's actually like an anti-pattern. It's fine for now, and I, I wouldn't really try to clean it up, but by the time we get to the Twitter client, um, we're gonna slowly teach you how like a lot of that code either needs to be pushed to the model, or it needs to be pushed to a view, or it needs to be pushed to a helper class. If you're not careful, controller classes, view controller classes will inflate very, very quickly with a lot of lines of code. It makes them, makes them quite difficult to maintain. So the final thing um, that people think about when they think about iOS apps is, oh, I wanna work with the camera. I don't care what I make, but I wanna work with the camera. Or I wanna work with um, location or Bluetooth. Uh, and so I guess there's good news and bad news. Like if you're coming into an app saying, oh, I don't care what I make as long as I use the camera, uh, it's just not a very good example because all of these things are really, really easy to use. Like for example, if I wanna get the location, I pretty much just say, hey, location manager, start giving me the location. And all of a sudden it'll, it'll start giving me callbacks. Here, here's your location, here's your location, here's your location. Um, and so, uh, using this as a criteria for choosing the app that you want to build is not incredibly useful as a driver of technology or you're learning in iOS because it is going to be so easy to, to do, generally speaking. Now, for all of these things, there's usually like a hard, um, an easy way of do, to do things and a hard way of doing things. Like for example, uh, if, I, if I want to integrate with the camera and I want to say, just do like take a picture, take a video, um, or play or display a picture or like, you know, play back a video, then very easy if I want to do it the stock way. If I want to do it the custom way, then all of a sudden you have to use a, a C framework called AV Foundation and it's much more complex. So often with hardware, for RESTful clients, again, you tend to be doing the easy thing. Um, you know, Apple's kind of optimized for, for that, or there's a lot of libraries that make it easy um, to do certain things. But if you have a very specific feature, like let's say that I was making Vine for the first time where Vine was like, say, stitching together those little snippets of video, then uh, because that's obviously more custom, then you have to kind of dig under the hood and implement that. So the kind of interesting thing is that Unlike maybe other applications, um, mobile architectures has a has a very constrained. Like we were pretty uh, almost exhaustive in terms of like the roles that each component plays in constructing the mobile app. And again, the caveat is because we have a very strong focus in RESTful clients, and it's really it's really RESTful clients that have like this very small number of uh, kind of design patterns in order to implement them. That that it, it kind of makes our lives easier. Uh, what that means, though, is that uh, when it's the, it's implementing those custom custom designs and custom interactions, like let's say they have some you know fancy uh, way of using gestures to control some kind of behavior, that where you spend most of your time in mobile development. So that's it with the mobile architecture. I think the best way to really understand it further is to to make these apps make these apps and, and really just see, um, just see how they're constructed.